I'm Paul Hahn, coordinator of Mission to North America. At m a we exist to partner with local churches, with presbyteries, with church planning networks, with movements of renewal to see the progress of the gospel throughout the United States and Canada. m a works to see about 50 or more churches planted a year. We are there to see the church renewed for gospel renewal. Richard Lovelace once said that renewal is a way of life, a need for every Christian, for every church, for every cluster of churches, all the time, in every place, in every way that matches what our Lord says, that He is about making all things new. The hope is He will come back again to make it all new, but He is working in His resurrection, love, and power to bring renewal now. You're going to hear some stories about the renewing grace of Jesus through the gospel in beautiful settings, in churches and in lives, and in broader communities. The life of a church is rooted in Jesus Christ and Him crucified, and the life of a community flows from the church into the community. The local congregation's participation in the King's continuing work is a function of the congregation's clear focus on the risen King and His continuing work. My name is Dan Gilchrist. I've been here since 2003. We are nestled in the, um, the Chattanooga Valley of, on, the, on the east side of Lookout Mountain in a little community called Flintstone, Georgia. We are an educated white middle class, largely an educated white middle class congregation. And we're tucked into a valley surrounded by white rural poverty wow. all the way up the socioeconomic spectrum. For us, learning what does it mean to follow the King faithfully and to love our community faithfully has meant um, a lot of soul searching. The Lord has opened up opportunities for us to be involved, created relationships across the street uh, in the elementary school. We are a Title I school, which means we have a high rate of students with, on free and reduced lunch, um, about 75%. Most of our partners are churches like Pastor Gilcrest Church, and they are an essential part of our, our school community. I cannot imagine Pastor Gilcrest Church not being involved in our school. I mean, our school functions because we are surrounded by good people that are willing to give their time and their prayers. I mean, we're, we're better because of that. Our oldest son is 16 years old, so he is a sophomore. And for whatever reason, being the first child, it was like this monumental decision on where to send him to school. He looked into Christian school, homeschooling, toured here and I don't think I know like my young self then with my first did not really kind of think about the importance of being in the community and being part of a community. Now looking back I think our decision to continue to send our children here is more about the importance of being where God has placed us and being part of that community and knowing that community. Without having children here there's conversations I just have in passing with parents, seeing the needs of the kids while I'm here volunteering that I would not know. I rarely meet people in my office. Uh, I'm often meeting them in restaurants and one of my uh, go-to places is uh, Susan's Diner right down the street. It's not unheard of for me to get there about eight o'clock in the morning and uh, just sit at a table and people just kind of come rotating through and I'll have, I'll have meeting after meeting after meeting. That's a lot of coffee and a lot of biscuits and sausage. Now, the Lord has opened ways for us to be involved with the uh, apartment complex across the way. People who are seniors and physically disabled and need uh, help, and so we've been able to connect with them. All of that is the outflow of what happens here in the midst of worship and, and fellowship and, and service. I think it was in the late 90s, I really began to be convinced as I looked at the scriptures that the church should be a place where we demonstrate and see the reconciling power of the gospel. We knew this was such an important issue uh, that we, uh, we decided that we needed to be unanimous on this as a session. And uh, we ended up adopting um, a vision and we uh, required all of our elders and now all of our staff to embrace a vision, not simply that they are unopposed, uh, but in this case that they are positively for that vision. We did a demographic study right here of the of our community. We discovered that our community was 3% Latino, 6% Asian, 38% African American, <laughs> which leaves about 53%, I think, uh, Anglos. Our church didn't look like that at all. We had no African Americans in our church. Being multi-ethnic, 
being inclusive is it's not organic. It's something that you have to be intentional about. You have to really, because it's not comfortable. It's not comfortable to hang out with people that, that you don't hang out with. We decided that we wanted to be intentional about reaching the African Americans in our community, and we thought, you know, if we could bring an African American on staff, that would be a great way to uh, to help us, and that certainly has been the case. That's what drew me, is, is just the passion for the vision of, of reaching people across the lines of race and class and, and gathering them in the worship and demonstrating the power of the gospel in, in, that, in that way. And we share the preaching just about equally. If I'm preaching, uh, he leads worship and do, does the sacraments. If he's preaching, I do sacraments, lead worship. And, uh, and because we wanted to model uh, that in our, in our leadership. Our church today is very different than it was 10 or 11 years ago when, uh, when Kenny came. What we were looking for was a Bible-believing, Bible-preaching church, and that's what Grace gave us. What really attracted me to the church was that I saw um, Kenny Foster's family, and I thought, wow, I said, this family looks a lot like ours, so let's try this church. So we did, and that was in 2005, and we've never turned back. I mean, the demographics have really changed. We see different cultures, uh, whether it be Eastern cultures, the, the Asians, uh, we see Hispanics, we see blacks, whites, everybody is, you know, worshiping God together. And that's one of the core principles of the church, the visions of the church, is to preach God's word and to show Christ's love, regardless of race, class, or culture. I think we're on the right track to destroying those lines that tend to separate us. I want Christ's glory, and that's what I want to see. That that's got to be the reason that you pursue the Great Commission, which is, that's what it is. Yeah. God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself in 2 Corinthians 5, 19. He's given to us this ministry of reconciliation. I think that the, the most important reason to pursue this vision is because it is God's vision for His church. There's nothing more satisfying than to have this confidence that what you're pressing, what you're leaning into, is what God wants. We pray, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven, right? And so what we are praying for and we're pursuing is, is, is the reality of the kingdom here on earth. There's just tremendous, uh, tremendous satisfaction that we're doing the Lord's will and there's great joy that one experiences in a church like this. I hope you enjoyed these stories of seeing Christ's grace at work in local communities, in local congregations, in the lives of individual Christians. The great hope of the gospel is that Christ is at work, that He is working to grow His grace down deeper in us and to share it out wider in the world through us. It's the promise of Easter, right, that Jesus came to give us His peace, His love, His forgiveness through His death and resurrection and yet now He has breathed His mission and His Spirit into us. And He says, as the Father has sent me, so send I you. We get to share in His project of renewal. We are His agents of renewal in this age going forward as we wait for His final return. Won't you pray with us? Won't you work with us? Come alongside us? Walk with us? As we seek to see renewal become a way of life more broadly and deeply in the PCA. Thanks so much.